how late it was, how late it was, and it is very late because it's so late, in fact, that I'm in my jammies. But the reason for that is that Rangers were playing uh, Atletico Mineiro in the Florida Cup and they were playing at uh, 12 o'clock our time, so it's uh, the middle of the night here, well, 3 o'clock in the morning. But, uh, you know, I, I promised you I would do these and, and here I am. Uh, for those of you who are just catching me for the first time, my name's David Edgar, I'm the host of Heart and Hand, the Rangers podcast, and uh, I, I do these after, after every Rangers game, so... The fact that it's the middle of the night makes no difference, and uh, although I'll be even less, you know, full of full of sense, and and there'll probably be a bit more bullshit because it is three in the morning, so sleep deprivation will do that to you. So how did the game go? Well, it was really two games because, uh, as he said in his post, uh, his pre-match sorry interview, Graham Marty is treating the two matches as four 45-minute training sessions, and you could see that from the the fact that Rangers made ten changes at half time. The first half side could best be described as experimental with uh, Dalcio at what appeared to be left back and uh, Nico Cranchar was, was playing further forward. It was it was not great. I would say that Mineiro were the better side in the first half. Uh, they hit the post and a good save from Jack Alnick after a dreadful attempt at a tackle from Dalcio led to the ball going to uh, the, the Mineiro striker who ran in goal but a really good save by Jack Alnick who came out and blocked it. On the plus side for Rangers was, uh, or were rather, really good performances from Sean Goss, who is bigger than I thought he was and, and looks much more physically imposing than I had uh, thought he was. He he, he he does look as though he's, he's going to have the physical attributes to play in the SPFL. But uh, nice pass, are very tidy, but uh, yeah, look, looks good on the ball and I think that there, there's something there. So so that was, that was positive. Um, Jamie Murphy made his debut one or two nice touches uh, didn't really have a lot of the ball to be honest uh, the game was played at, as you can imagine at a really really slow pace it was a training game there was no doubt of that Atletico Mineiro played effectively their um, under 20 side with only a couple of first team players making appearances for them so although they were young full of energy pacey good on the ball as you as you'd expect they weren't, uh, you know, the top level by any means, but they did have the better of the first half. Um, for Rangers, Serge Atakai uh, played that first half and played well. I thought he did really well. Um, good, he, something about that boy. He's, he's got skill. Negative, Nico Cranchar completely done, and I've said this before, and I stand by it that I just don't see what he brings to the side anymore. And it's not, you know, it's not lack of trying. It's just I think his legs have gone. I just think that there's, there's nothing there. I think that the injury and the amount of games he played have taken their toll, unfortunately. And Dalcio, who's just... Uh, I'm just not entirely sure um, as a footballer. I feel really bad because he's a young guy and he's, he's trying to make his way on, on loan in a foreign country and it takes balls to do that. But, Jesus Christ, he, he wouldn't get a game for the Usher Juniors playing like that. Um if he's not impressing as a winger, I really don't see the point of trying him as a fullback because he can't tackle. Um, but he looked completely out of his depth. Everything, positional sense, um, the pace of the game, and the, the game was a training game. The same with Nico. They, they were off the pace in a game that was played really slowly. So that was concerning. Into the second half, though, complete change around. Obviously, 10 players, including, interestingly, from a Rangers point of view, Andy Halliday and Michael O'Halloran coming back into the side. The key thing, though, the key substitution was Josh Windass, who by far was the best player on the pitch. Um, he scored the goal. It was a lovely goal, a uh, lovely finish from him after a nice move with Daniel Candias and Eduardo Herrera. And uh, we, we, you know, deserved the win base in the second half because we were by far the better side, penned them in. Didn't make an awful lot of clear-cut chances. Josh Windass had another one after a really good run in the inside left channel. Shot across the keeper he was a bit unlucky with. But overall, Rangers were, were very comfortable in that second half. Played most of the, the, the game in and around the Atletico box. They were dangerous on the break, as I say, they had pace. But their chances mainly came from mistakes from our centre-backs. The second half, it was David Bates and Daniel Cardoso. David Bates' distribution let him down a couple of times. Something he needs to work on. We all know he's a great... I think he's he's got great potential as a defender, but he does need to work on because there will be times that, that teams will sit on the other defender and let him be the guy who's who's bringing it out, um, and he needs to be better at it. And Cardoso made a really bad error towards the end where he he did his usual thing that he does at least once a game where he charges out 
to try and win the ball doesn't um, makes a bad decision and then it, it costs us uh, and that's exactly what happened but overall there were more positives than negatives I would say it was a good training exercise and it really was the Corinthians game they're going to play a full side will be much tougher they're a better side than Mineiro anyway um, and that'll be much tougher on Saturday I think the main thing coming out of it is that Rangers need a uh, a striker we, we we really really do need a striker and props to uh, Premier Sports who for a tenner brought us the game five minutes before it started nothing at half time and no analysis so that was fantastic they basically just took the stream from ESPN um, I wish ESPN had just chose to, to show it on their channel in the UK but uh, it, it it being on and uh, the match on Thursday has reminded me to cancel it, which I didn't do after uh, our European disappointment this season because I'm a lazy bastard. And uh, I've been paying for Premier Sports ever since. And tonight I thought, well, I wonder what's on that. I'm being unfair here because I watch a lot of sports, you know. Uh, it was Swedish ice hockey. Yep. Sounds like something I'm making up, doesn't it? But no, that that's what they were showing and they charge a tenner a month for that shit. So uh, that'll be getting cancelled on Sunday morning. But uh, if you're watching this before um, um, or just after the game or before this showing, then it's on a free channel tomorrow. You can catch the game at 8 o'clock on a channel called Free Sports. Um, 424 on Sky, I don't know the other ones, but you, if you look about in your thing, you'll be able to find it. And they're also showing it again tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, so you will be able to catch that match. Biggest takeout for me is Josh Windass, as I say, carrying himself like a first team all these days. Looks as though he's got to be an important player for his 500k offers. Fuck off. You know, no way. We shouldn't be even talking to teams um, before five times that, really, because he's just going to get better now. He's, he's got over all the stuff that was holding him back, I think, in terms of confidence and whatnot. So he's a player that we need to do. We definitely need another striker. We don't have enough up front. Um, Herrera again continues to. He does. He does have the odd nice touch. He absolutely does. It was a nice one for the goal, but he's cumbersome. He doesn't get on the end of things. His movement is non-existent. He's not good in the air, and he, he he's just not a constant danger. And the only other option we have up front, if uh, if Morelos needs a break or isn't playing well or gets injured, is Ryan Hardy. And, you know, Ryan Hardy may well go on to, to have a good career, but at the moment there's not been many signs of that. So we desperately need signings in this window. Um, talk about Jason Cummings, I think he would be ideal uh, if that deal can come off. But ideally we need not just one, probably a, two strikers. I know that we're interested in Jordan Jones, the Kilmarnock winger. I know that we're interested in Greg Dockery, the Hamilton midfielder, but I would have strikers as a priority ahead of them. But who knows? There's a lot of business to be conducted over the next few weeks. If you enjoy these wee videos and uh, you want more, then come and see us at Heart and Hand, the Rangers podcast. Now, there's two free ones a week. You can pick up, uh, them up from wherever you get your podcasts, Apple, uh, Android, anywhere at all. Uh, they'll be there. But uh, if you want even more and you want different, then come to our subscription site which is on patreon.com p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com forward slash heart and hand and there we've got tons we've got daily updates with all the news rumours all the, uh, the the latest info um, you don't need to go anywhere else they'll all be in the one place but we also do tons of different shows such as shows on the Advocate years where we look extensively at Dick Advocate's time uh, two youngsters um, called the Millennial Bears are looking at everything that happened the years 2000 to 2010. Supporter stories. This week we got the story of a, a chap who was working in the Rangers shop on the day of Helicopter Sunday, which was wonderful. We've got Rangers bet when uh, the comedy genius that is Jack Shaw takes a, a, a tenuous bet on uh, Rangers at the weekend, but explains the story behind it, and it's usually hilarious, and tomorrow is Duncan Ferguson. Uh, we had Ian McCall from the Founders Trail on talk, telling us about Tom Valance this week, and we also started the uh, Quintessential Quiz, which is a Rangers quiz, and uh, that's open to all our subscribers to come on as well. So there's tons and tons of stuff happening. You get at least two shows every day, and uh, over 1,800 people have already signed up, and they're, they're all staying, so there must be something to it. It only costs one ninety nine pounds a month or 3 if you want to have even more content please come along that's patreon.com forward slash heart and hand if you want to talk to me i'm at ibrox rocks on twitter but till then i'm gonna go to my bed love you all very much bye